Hello everyone and welcome back to a video. In this tutorial we're going to be introducing you to uh, Sparklines. So Sparklines are the ability to have uh, charts uh, in the simplest term but actually to have these charts stored within a cell. So this is particularly useful if you've got a concise uh, summary that you're wanting to present or you just want to add this as a quick visual to your uh, existing data rather than having to insert um, uh, fully fledged charts or do any pivot tables of sort. So what I've got is uh, some example data, what you'll see on the screen now, going from columns B to E. Uh, I've actually reused some um, uh, similar data to what we looked at uh, in a previous video. So if the format looks kind of a bit similar, that's why. So apologies for sort of recycling some information, but I just thought it was uh, it'd be a good use for this video. And it's actually what sort of sparked me onto this video in the first place. So what we're going to do for spark lines, very simple to add in and you can see I've increased the space I have in row 2, so the height of it, just so it's a decent bit um, uh, size to fit these charts in so they actually look visually appealing rather than too small. So in order to get the spark lines up, all we need to do is go onto our insert tab in the ribbon and over towards the right hand side and it might be in a slightly different um, order or location for you depending on what version of Excel you're using but you want to look for the group of spark lines that like I say within the insert tab and we'll just start off with a column so if you just go and select column you'll get this pop-up box and you'll be asked for two pieces of information so the first one is the data range so the range obviously what contains all the data we're going to have uh, a dedicated chart for each column, so one for January, February and one for March. So to get started, we're starting with January, all we need to do is uh, select this, uh, the first option to do our range. And as you can see, I was going to select from rows 4 to 8 of column C. We go back into our, um, our pop-up. And it's already been selected for me, but if it wasn't, we could just either type or select the cell reference of C2 this one we've got selected here, in which we want the uh, the chart to be stored into or the spark line to be placed. Once that's done, if you go OK, you can see that a chart has now been published into that cell for us. And if I click away, you can see, take the border away and you can see what it looks like. Uh, obviously, if I wanted to, you could reduce the size of this row, um, depending on what um, space you have available. But again, for the demonstration of this video, just make it nice and big so we can clearly see what's going in there. First thing to point out uh, with this is the range, in terms of the scale for each of the bars, you'll see they're on um, obviously different sizes because obviously there's different values below. So if I was to change one of these, so let's take this 20, it was quite a small one, and let's make that 30. Once I hit enter, you can see everything automatically updates for us. So there's not much where we actually need to do there. One thing's worth noticing is in terms of these spark lines, you'll see there's a couple of very small ones, so like this very first one and this uh, fourth one here. So they look very small, um, but actually they're the same value of 25. And the reason they look small is when uh, using these spark lines, it uses your minimum uh, value as the sort of the starting point and your largest value as the top point. And that those between the range between those two values obviously is the range between your chart. So uh, sometimes that can be a bit misleading, but it's just something that you want to factor in. It's particularly useful once you get into trending information because obviously it clearly um, defines and shows you the trend. And this might be better illustrated if I just uh, copy this across to February and March. So in order to do that, uh, get this graph for February and March, we don't actually need to go back into the uh, ribbon at the top for the insert. All we need to do is select our existing chart. In our bottom right corner, we have our little square where we can drag for those two other columns, and you can see the information is populated in there. And these two actually help demonstrate what I was saying in terms of the ranges and the scale you have available within these charts. So you can see in February, we have uh, our data going up in iterations of fives, starting from the number five. And in March, also the data is going up in iterations of fives, but you can see it looks exactly the same visually because it's just based on that iteration of obviously its growth. So that's just one thing to bear in mind when using this chart. So let's just update my data slightly a bit so it looks a bit more on there. Perfect. So the flexibility and some updates we can make to this chart just to make them look a bit more visually appealing. So having selected the chart of uh, the chart of choice, so I was going for my first one in C, we've got now this Sparkline tools and we can go into the design tab. So from in here we have a few options available to us. So the first one we're here, uh, this big one in the middle, we can choose the color scheme. So if we didn't like the initial colors, we could change it to a yellow, 
we've got a grey uh, and many other variations obviously you can see all sorts of options available to us um, what I'm just going to do is just delete these last two because it's a bit uh, confusing on the screen so if you want to get rid of a spark line you just have to remember that you can't just do your delete button you have to select and then use this clear option that is available under the spark line tool so if I just go in here to clear and go clear select the spark lines you can see it gets rid of those two so going back into this one and have a look at the options we have for formatting. So we've looked at the different colours, what we can have available to us in the centrepiece here. And then you'll get notice these selection points that we have. So this is allowing us to call out various aspects within our chart. So the first one we've got is our high point. So if we select or tick high point, what it will do, it will call out the largest value to us. So we can see at the moment 50 is in Manchester, so the last column. If I was to change Edinburgh to 50, Obviously, because they're the same values, it's going to identify both of those as the highest point and therefore colour them. But obviously, change that to 45, you can see how that high point is now changed to a different uh, column within our graph. So let's get back into that. So that's our high point. And if we want to change the colour that has tagged our high point, all we need to do is go into this marker colour option here, into high point, and then we can select a more desirable colour that we wish. And that one's horrible, I don't know why I picked that. But let's go into maybe uh, a red. So you can see that's how you can change that. Other options we have available. So other than high point, we've also got low point. So again, we can go into our marker color and change that. As you can see, our low point is very low. You can barely even see that on the page there. But obviously, that's just to show that you can highlight that as well. We also have the option for negative points. So highlight a negative point. We don't have any at the moment. But if I was to create one and maybe make this minus 10 you can see how the uh, the uh, axis has slightly changed so we can now show this uh, negative value so again having now got the negative one or negative values ticked you can see where it's got a different color and like so we can obviously change that through the marker color and lastly we've got first point and last point so again we can use that by changing the uh, in the marker, uh, so we've got last point and first point here, we can just change the colors for those as well, just so it gives us a better visual representation of that information. Other than bar chart, we obviously have a couple of other options to us as well. So we could do a line chart, and to get that change, all I've had to do is, again, within our design tab, over the left-hand side, we previously had the column option selected. This time, all you need to do is select the line, and you can see that it's just gonna update that for us as it's done. And because we've got the first and last point uh, ticked, you can see it's put those little uh, dots on the start and end, just so you can see those positions. But if I was to take them off, obviously they will be removed. The third and the final uh, chart option we have is the win and loss. So that's just uh, achieved by selecting this button here, the win slash loss. And this is just a binary option. So all it's gonna show us is if it's a positive number, it's gonna give the plus one. So that's why everything, all positive numbers are the same. And if it's a negative, it's just gonna show a minus one, as you can see with the minus 10 we have there. And alternatively, if you had a zero value, it's not gonna, it's gonna be a zero. So you're therefore gonna have no value uh, demonstrated there. Let's put it back to 10. And then let's go back into our design. And then we can go obviously back into column and you can see that information there. And as mentioned before, if you need to copy that across to any other columns, all you need to do is click and drag and that will be updated for you. One thing, as often data can increase and we might have more rows of information that we wish to include into these charts. So let's say we've got some further information. Maybe we've got a 70 and maybe a 65 here. As you can see, by default, they're not being included into our data. So all we need to do is if I just go into our chart, we've got here in column C, go into design, and right at the very left-hand corner, we've got enter data. Uh, just do edit single spark line data or edit group data. So we can see that I've gone into the group data and it's highlighted all of these three charts, so from C to E. And that's represented in here. So we can see location of the charts is columns C to E. And obviously our data range is C4 to E4 because it's currently going from, let's say, row four in column C all the way through to row eight of column E. In order to now update this to factor in our new data, all we need to do is just update this just to show the additional couple of rows in there and do enter, okay. Ah, and it's because it's got different values. So what's the, probably the best thing to do is if you have a, want to update, 
rather than down to group, if you go into edit single spark line, spark line data, and now we can just select our data that we require. Obviously a few more in there, those rows. Go OK and you can see that's now updated for us. And I believe if we want to update these other ones, we might be able to just click and drag this across. Yep, so then we go, if you just update that first one, then do a click and drag on your other options, you can see that that will then update so you can easily add more information into the other charts as well if you require it. So that's how you do spark lines. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. And sorry, just one more thing before we go is just to remind you, if you then want to get rid of your spark lines, obviously you could either delete the row or alternatively, if you want to get rid of them, make sure you've got all your spark lines selected. Go into your design mode and you can select all of them or a single one or a multiple, whatever you require. But once you've selected the ones you want to remove, go into your spark lines design tool, the option that says clear, drop down and just do clear selected spark lines and that will remove them for you. So as I was saying, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give the video a thumbs up and like. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated by us and helps us identify the videos you are enjoying more so we can make sure we produce more of that content. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all our new videos as soon as they come out onto YouTube. In the link, or the, sorry, in the description for this video, you'll find links uh, for our social media, so Instagram, Facebook, and even our website. So if you aren't already following, by all means, go check those out. And if you have any questions or whatever, either contact us via one of those platforms or drop us a comment below this video. Thank you very much for watching, and we shall see you in the next video.